so let's start the session this is the beginner's guide to uh, app development and game development so uh, you will be learning a lot in this session about uh, the roadmap of uh, app development and game development so uh, give, let me give me uh, uh, let me give you a brief overview about uh, app development so app development is uh, divided into multiple parts uh, we use unity we use uh, sorry android uh, studios for app development for native app development and for a uh, hybrid for multi-platform like uh, one app for multi-platform like android and then we have uh, ios we use uh, react native and uh, flutter which is like uh, give, give which can give you like more bugs while using it because uh, they, uh, they they can have a lot of glitches while the uh, app development in kotlin or the native ad app development is more efficient in terms of uh, the uh, errors and the test testing. So let me start with the session. So I am uh, Anand Tupare. Uh, I am an Android app developer and game developer and an open source contributor. I have also contributed to multiple companies like Unity, and I have worked with and I have also been credit credited in Unity 2022.3 version and i am a certified android app developer by intern shala so we will be learning about the tools used for app development and game development the process is almost the same the, the but the main difference arises in the uh, pro, uh, in the technology used we have we we should have an idea we should uh, have a technology then we should publish uh, the game and then monetize the game so that's uh, about the app development and game development so the tools needed for uh, android studios are uh, for game development are unity unreal engine android studios and game maker these are the four tools mostly used for uh, game development after the uh, covid pandemic the game development field has been uh, growing since with the speed of 20% per year and it has a market value of 140 billion dollars so i hope you will be a part of it uh, after the lecture so unity is the most popular game development engine and uh, unreal engine is the second most uh, popular game development engine almost 60% of the games are created in unity while uh, 40% uh, 30 to 20% are created in unreal engine and Android Studio co contributes about one or two percent of ga uh, games, and Game Maker is the uh, least used software in game development. So we we will be learning both Android Studios. Uh, we will be mostly learning Android Studios because it focuses both on app and game development, as the session has the title in it. So additional tool for game development. So for game development, you should uh, you have multiple parameters. Like for creating models, 3D models, you can use Blender while you, you use a Gibber, which is music creating platform as you need music for games, right? Like music for uh, uh, implementation of games. So you can use G Gibber, which is an AI uh, software, AI implemented software, which co converts code into music. Uh, so you can uh, use it. And we have Game Bench. So before publishing a game, we we should try to use it uh, and test it. So basically, game engine test is the uh, app or the game. Uh, sorry, the game. And Bl Blender is the most popular tool for creating models like cars. You create 3D cars in games. While in 2D, we use uh, mostly the photo uh, shop apps to create the models. While for 3D, we use Blender and Maya so that we can create 3D models. Right. So. Let's move. let's move so for app development the most popular tool is android studio and it is the uh, official android uh, official tool for uh, app development while uh, app development has multiple tools like flutter and uh, flutter and react native android studio is the most used software for app development it is official uh, development environment by google developed by JetBrains. So uh, it is an official ID. I'll be sharing the uh, link to the session so you can download the Android Studios. 
I I will also be creating a game project and uh, Android Studios in today's session really fast. So programming language in Android Studios. So basically, we use two programming language in uh, Android Studios for creating apps or games in Android Studios, which is Java and Kotlin. So you must be thinking, which is a better language? Is it Java or Kotlin? So both has a different different factor, pros and cons. So let's start with Java. Java is like uh, uh, contributes a lot of uh, publishing papers in their website. So you have a uh, lo a lot of uh, resources to learn Java while Kotlin has limited about amount of resources as it is a new language and it is just five years old but uh, the uh, Kotlin takes advantage advantage in efficiency because Kotlin is most powerful language in 2023 as I said and Kotlin uh, has no boiler code boiler code means a code which is useless which uh, Java has a lot of boiler code like if you write 100, uh, 100 code of Java, you may end up writing 80, 80 code in 80 lines code in Kotlin. This is the difference between Java and Kotlin in Android uh, Android Studio. While you can use uh, both of them simultaneously as uh, they both use Java compiler as their main source for uh, compiling the uh, programs. So it's uh, your pick. You may choose Java or Kotlin according to your purpose or need. So Kotlin was launched on 15 Feb by uh, 2016 uh, by JetBrains, almost uh, five, uh, five years. So it uh, removed the boilerplate code of Java. So that is it. So another factor in Android development is whether you have uh, you will choose uh, Android development in iOS or in and uh, Android uh, app development in iOS or in Android. So uh, uh, in Android you get a lot of audience uh, while in iOS you have less number of audience uh, or the users because of the number of uh, uh, mobiles that uh, the uh, people have so iOS uh, so Android dev development is more uh, popular compared to the uh, iOS development while I uh, if you are working as a freelancing a freelancer if you want to work as a freelancer iOS developer, uh, a developer or, or the user has a more uh, a percentage of chance to give you uh, money to earn you more money, so that that's why you can use uh, iOS uh, more for freelancing. But uh, for Android Studios, it is cheaper because you don't need a MacBook or anything. You just need any platform like Linux, Windows. So I I am using Windows, so you can download in uh, any any kind of uh, platform. So that is it. So uh, th these are, I'm going to teach variables of Py uh, Kotlin. It, it is important uh, because uh, for creating an app and games, some uh, fundamentals are important for uh, Kotlin. So uh, we have variables like in other programming language you have uh, you must have seen. It is similar to all, but it is more uh, uh, you write less code in it. So don't uh, ignore this code. Just uh, focus on this we have var and well so var uh, can it can be changed why it can it can be changed while well cannot be changed because like for example i have taken this example uh other cars which is which deal with a car in a, a game basically so uh, a car in a car uh, uh you you can't change this uh, change change it further in the code while this is the car position so why uh, it, so position changes while the car moves so we are using var in it not well uh, so that's the difference between var and well so moving to the data types it is similar you have seen python java uh, other languages it is similar to them you have string integer double float boolean and all exactly same as in other programming language but if you have a uh, experience in other programming language it is very easy easier to you to understand uh, Kotlin if you have some experience in Java Kotlin is just similar to Java so yeah so this is a structure of a function in Kotlin or method so we write fun and main uh, keys then we make par uh, parenthesis this is how we create a structure of a function in Kotlin 
so these are the important callback methods for games uh, mostly or an app so on create uh, creates a activity so activity is basically a user interface which you uh, see in an application it is a component of app so basically uh, activity uh, for example is when you open your email you may see the first screen uh, of email which contains a number of emails uh, email then you have the compose button when you click the compose uh, button you change change the activity right so uh, on uh, when you click uh, email gmail button icon it will create a activity on start button on start fun uh, callback uh, callback method will work when when you uh, start when the progress will start you have to write the code in it on resume uh, will work like for example when you create an uh, when you open an email you have number of email as i said uh, before you click on one so while the activity changes you have to uh, you have to pause the old activity so that uh, you you may not o overlap o both the activities in the same android app so that's that's why we create a uh, on pause and on resume uh, you, you know when we uh, click the back button in the application uh, in the email to move back to the number of uh, emails we use on resume button so that uh, it will resume again on stop button uh, if you want to destroy uh, if you want to stop an activity like as i said uh, you click on the email you move to the next the uh, before the first one stops the second activity starts so uh, if you want to destroy the activity completely like in some apps uh, mostly uh, like uh, food ordering apps when you order a food you move to before activity you can't actually because it is destroyed on restart it will restart again so these are the important callback methods which are used in apps and games both so you you have to learn more about them so uh let's move, move to how to publish an app so after building your app uh after building your app in android studios and testing it with the targeted platform like if you have uh, targeted for android uh, android app you have to choose the uh, app store like uh, google play store or any other app store i'll show you a, a demo of how to publish an android app on a uh, play store so in a uh, play store you need 25 dollar uh, a lifetime a lifetime charge you have to pay uh, in one uh, in one transaction so that you can uh, publish any apps in it it is very cheap compared to ios where you have to pay for a single app for publishment so how to monetize an app or a game so there are multi -way, uh, multiple ways to monetize an app or a game so uh, we mostly use google ads which is admob admob is most popular platform for uh, google ads so in admob uh, we are given a code in their website to initialize ad and we uh, put the uh, code from the google ads into the android studios platform and in unity ads uh, it is used in unity game engine so basically as i said before this is uh, for game so unity game engine uh, is an game engine which is the which is most popular as i said earlier for game development here uh, the unity provides its own app revenue source which is unity ads it also gives the same uh, code you apply the code in the uh, game uh, in the game and it, you can publish it later so that is it how it works i'll show you the demo so you can get the more clear view of what i'm trying to say so the third way is to use the in-app purchases you have you must have seen in multiple games or apps like in fortnite they provide uh, in-app purchases which uh, when you uh, buy some kind of asset from them they you have uh, you, they get the transaction that's how the third so source of revenue is for an app or in game so component components of an app so basically uh, we have an activity for uh, as in component activity is entry point for interacting with user it rep represent a single screen with a user interface for an example as I, as i have given example already of an email app which ha which might have one activity that shows a list of emails another activity uh, to compose an email another active activity for reading an uh, email so they have multiple activities as i said although the activities work together to form a cohesive user experience 
the email app so hope you get it so let me show you demo of how to uh, use android studios in uh, windows so uh, if you have any questions you can uh, write in the chat box now uh, of whatever I have teach till now so this this was all theoretical work uh, now I'll be show, uh, sh showing how to do it practically how to create an app practically Yeah, so hope you can see this game. We are going to open Android Studios. So let, let us wait for it to open. So you can download Android Studios from uh, their Google's official website. So, developer dot Android. This is the website for downloading uh, Android Studios. You have to uh, follow the instruction after downloading it. So you may download it later in the session after the session. So let me show you a demo of how to create an app. So yeah, here we go. Our uh, Android Studio is open. So let me create a. You have to go in File section. You have to create a, a new project in it. Yeah, you have to create a new project in it. So as you can see, these are the uh, types of. Uh, activity which you can choose in default while creating an app so you can create an app for phone and tablet android tv automotive wear os these are the platform which the uh, android studios offer for their uh, app application development so uh, let me explain you this is the basic activity so it has nothing just the uh, bar above this is also basic activity this is a uh, empty uh, compose activity which is compose is a new technology in android development which creates a more efficient uh, app and uh, you have google admobs activity where you can uh, already initialize the app here is the login activity where you can create a login page like for social media networks you you must have seen facebook and all the first page is the login page this is the google pay activity for a uh, payment creation app like Google Pay and all. This is the Google Map activity. If your app needs kind of uh, and Google Map, you can use this kind of activity so that uh, if you are building like, for example, you are building a cycle app, you want to track how much kilometer has and cycle travel, you have to use Google Maps in it. Uh, so as a new feature of Android uh, Studios, they have offered us C++ and native C++ in their application so we are going to choose empty activity because uh, we will be building from scratch so let's name the application something uh, I'm going to make an app that's why uh, and game that's why I'm going to give like a, a car game I'll show you something like that here is the package name. The package name is the name uh, which it will show while you uh, publish in uh, uh, the uh, Google Play. So this will be your company's name. So you, you may choose according to your necessity, the package name. So the, here is the language selection. As I said, uh, there are only two languages available in uh, Android Studios, Java and Kotlin. So we are going to choose Kotlin. And we are going to use the API. This is, these are the APIs which Android Studios offer. 
so I would prefer to choose the API which most of the de devices work with. Here, this API work with 94.4 device uh, percent of devices. So you may have more number of uh, users in it if you use this API. But if you use more old API, you you may be offered less feature, but you will be uh, increased in the number of users which can access your uh, a game or an app. So let's select. Uh, a new API because uh, we need new features but we have less number just 94 percent of the devices can work with in this app so let's finish it so for some it will take some time if you will download it for the first time to do gradle gradle binding which is uh, building uh, the gradle file and all the tools needed for uh, creating an application so let me uh, give you a brief overview of uh, the all the ui and all uh, of the application of the studios so this is the main file uh, kotlin file where you write the code of kotlin the logic in kotlin and this is the xml file so uh, it is loading if you will download it for the first time, it will take around uh, five to ten minutes, depending on your com uh, on on the RAM of your computer. It is a heavy software, that's why you need uh, at least four GB of RAM in your laptop. So it is taking some time to uh, build the Gradle files. Let's wait for it. Yeah, so uh, it is ready, I guess. Yeah, so uh, you, you can see uh, all of the uh, files and all which is given in it. So this is the project folder. Uh, project folder here are the all the files related to your project. So this is the Java here. Your co code will be stored. This is the manifest file. So while creating an uh, a while publishing an app, your uh, app or game needs to uh, have manifest file so that it can read the code and uh, can execute it it contains uh, all the code which is needed for execution like the package name the target api uh, you don't need, uh, need to know much about it because uh, it is mostly done in default and unless and until you are an uh, experienced programmer you can change it according to your needs so yes uh, this is the main activity as i said the kotlin file it is under the java folder because you can use java and kotlin both simultaneously as i said Mm, and here are the resources file here uh, resources file contains all the files with the uh, tools uh, with the uh, packages which you can use like uh, in apps and games you can see multiple images uh, you can uh, use multiple ui buttons and all you may store the pictures on uh, them in the resources folder and you can use in your code by referring to them by r.drawable code so this is the gradle script uh gradle, gradle script deals with all of the uh, scripts which are need uh, to be uh, used while building an app so this is an uh, raw app after uh, building it it will use gradle scripts to build an o a apk from this raw file so that's why we need Gra gradle script uh, grip, uh, scripts for it but you don't need to uh, know much about it because uh, it deals with uh, the internal internal things uh, default things that's why so in drawable folders you can uh, put all of the files which like uh, your button uh, and the car if you are building an app a game you can put all the cars and all the folders like for a car game like we are creating right now you need car files for it so you can store in it 
uh, in the draw apple folder so this is the mani uh, uh, android manifest file as i said we don't need it this is xml file this is the like the most important file for uh, android development uh, because it is it deals with the front end while kotlin is the back end so in the front end uh, you can see there are multiple uh, constant layout you can drag and drop all the button you need like you need button here you can put here the button you can name it anything here from here you can name it start button for example yeah so like uh, it will work like that you i have given the id that's why it is not uh, changing from button to start start you can uh, select the text and write start so that it can bring the start button so that's how you dro uh, drop in button from it this is an xml file but i don't recommend it doing with uh, dro dropping and dragging and dropping because you can't customize it mu much right later on when you uh, are uh, experienced or you go uh, into you want to apply in in a company or uh, you can't just drag and drop right you you should know the xml exact xml code so from the code section here you can see the code you can split it here is the uh, uh, all of the front end this is xml is an uh, front end language for android development uh, so uh, as i was saying it is front end so it will basically deal with all of the button sort of things while the logic is created in uh, kotlin that's why just a second yes this is the xml file so uh, this is uh, the layout which is selected is constant layout this is called the constant layout which is which you drag and do drop the uh, ui uh, buttons that's why so here we'll change it to linear layout after changing it to linear layout you can write code in it uh, instead of just dragging and dropping you can see now we can't drag and drop because uh, we are using the linear layout for the application right now so that is it so this is the text view text view is something which deals with uh, any text uh, which an app deals with so here we have written uh, by default it uh, came hello world we can change it to anything else we don't need it basically so we can remove it from it from this so here we just have the button you can uh, after learning uh, a bit of xml you have to learn a uh, basics of xml so that you can uh, deal with all the sort of codes and the logic for the front end but it is not tough most of the code are suggested after writing let me show you an, uh, an example margin left margin bottom so you can give it a margin like 10 sp so that it can move from here to there just a second so it is already on bottom that's why it is not changing so yeah that is it for the xml side so now uh for the demo i'll be creating an uh car game a basic car game so uh, for that uh, i have already created an kotlin uh, folder it deals with logic because uh, uh, creating an kotlin folder takes a lot of time that's why i have already cre created it uh, before the session so i'll be using the same code which i have created before you may uh, uh, you may follow me on github and i'll be sharing it till tomorrow you can use the source code for creating your own uh, game so yeah so uh, now i'll be teaching you how to uh, run your application on your phone or uh, any any kind of devices which you have first you have to pair your device from the, the device section so uh, if you want to test your app uh, while working on it you have to uh, connect it to an device you can either connect it using a usb cable or you can connect it wirelessly using your debug debugging tools 
so for that uh, you we can also uh, you create a virtual machine which will run a virtual uh, uh, virtual phone in your computer where you can run the app you can select the phone you can select all of the uh, necessary files uh, or the version you need in phone like you can use pixel phone oh, and you can also select the operating system which uh, which is used while creating an android app so uh, this is it about uh, the virtual machine or the virtual system so i'll i'll be showing you how to create a virtual system so uh, let's not create a virtual system because it will take a lot of file a uh, uh, lot of time if you want to use it uh, you can use it but i would i won't recommend using it if your uh, ram is like 4 gb to 8 gb because it takes a lot of ram uh, to be uh, to be honest it takes uh, 8 gb of ram so you can work with virtual machine then but we'll be using uh, the devices uh, which i have phone right now i have an android phone right now uh, i will pair it with my uh, android studios so if you have an android app you should go to settings you should go to developer set uh, settings So after going to developer settings, we, you have to turn on the wireless uh, developer settings. So you can connect it to wirelessly by the OTP. It will show. So pair device using Wi-Fi. So this is the OTP. You have to uh, show the o OTP from your. Uh, so this is the wireless uh, debugging in these uh, settings. So we have wireless debugging. Hope you can see the screen. You have to go to the wireless debugging and click here. You have to pair the device with QR code. So you 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 have to then scan the code, which is given by Android Studios. So I have paired the device. Let's wait uh, to connect the device. So after connecting to the device, you can run uh, your app. So you are uh, done with the testing thing because you can test your app by running it. Let us wait for it. Oh, it is taking a bit of time. Let's wait. You can't connect it to an iOS device because Android Studio just deal with the Android devices. You have to keep in mind uh, of that. Maybe due to uh, slow internet, it is taking a lot of time. Let me try again. I think it is not connecting right now. So, yeah, uh, 
So, uh, Stephen, uh, you have asked the question. You mentioned something about iOS that I need uh, a Mac to do. So, actually, you don't need a Mac. You uh, need uh, Android because it is Android Studios. So, it deals with only Android applications. That's why you need an Android app for it. Or an Android phone. You just need an Android uh, device. Maybe it can be a laptop or it can be a phone. Depends upon you. So here in the history, it is showing that my phone is connected. But it is not connecting right now. I don't know why. Uh, due to an, uh, it can it, some it is a new technology with wire wireless connection that that's why it is taking long time to connect. Let me create a virtual ma machine as a better option. So I hope you are learning something in this session. Hope you are enjoying the session and you stay till the end to uh, learn about the publishing and the monetization st strategy. We have more uh, 15 minutes. We will take the session to more 15 or 20 minutes depending upon the time which uh, it is going to take. So uh, until it is downloading, let me show you how to publish an Android app. So after creating an Android app, you uh, you go you may publish it uh, in Android Studios. So we'll be using Developer Console. You can type Developer Console in your browser. You will go to uh, Google dot Developer dot com. This is the official website of the Google where all of the uh, Android games and apps are published from. So we go to the con console. You have to choose your account. I already have a developer account. So this is uh, all uh, the apps I have published. I have only published one app till now. So after for public uh, publishing an app, uh, if you log in for the first time in this website, we'll charge you twenty five dollars for uh, uh, as a one time cost, as I said earlier. So after this, you have to create app. You have to type your app name. Like like I was creating an Android Studio. This is an uh, app or end game. End game. This is end game. So this is free. You have to confirm all the policies. You have to uh, uh, agree with all the policies which they deal with. You have to create app. So the, uh, after doing this, you have to, uh, you know, uh, publish your, uh, for publishing your app, you have to uh, put all the folders in here so that uh, all the APK file, APK file which you create, you have to put it here, right? So uh, the OS is done downloading. Now we are going to download the phone. Our game is going to be portrait, right? So we are going to do, choose the portrait mode. Pixel 2, device is pixel 2. Let me start the device. So uh, after you are done making your app uh, or your game, you may go to build and make project. You can click on run button so that you can uh, run your project in the phone. Yeah, so our uh, device is starting. This is our device, which is virtual, which is Google Pixel. It will take some time to load. As my phone was not connecting uh, due to an issue, uh, I created a virtual machine so that I could run my app in it. So guys, you can ask any question if you are having or any doubt or any confusion or any uh, tips you want.
for Android development. So you have to start learning Kotlin for Android development. It is the most popular language, as I said many a times. So yeah, this is the virtual device we have created. It takes a lot of RAM. It is slow, but uh, for now I have to use it because uh, the other option is not working. But if you are creating your app, you can use your own device as uh, the only option. So you run your app by clicking the run button. It will run in your phone. So uh, it is uh, it will uh, gradle build build the app and it will run in the phone. And for monetization, as I was talking, for monetization, we have to use ad mobs. Uh, ad mob is the most popular uh, monetization uh, platform which you can monetize your app or game in. So uh, you 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 have to sign in it. Uh, sign in in it. Uh, you 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 have to read their policy how to implement the, uh, uh, your app uh, how to implement their ads in your app so they will provide you with the code yeah so this is the code for for configuration of your uh, of your uh, Android app, so you have to copy paste this code. You have to put it in your Android Studios so that you can work with it, right? So it will create all of the uh, configuration needed for implementation of uh, ads from their databases. You have to initialize their app uh, ads. So these are the ad formats. You can implement a banner ad. For implementing a, a banner ad, you have to uh, you click on this button. It will give you a code for banner ad. This is the code for banner ad. So ba banner ad is a basically ad which is shown in the top or bottom of an app, which is a really small uh, kind of uh, app, which is very really uh, small app. So I guess our uh, gradle, gradle build is in. So you can see here in our phone that our app has been generated uh, which we have uh, created just the start button so you may use it see this this is the button we have created it is running in this application so i hope you get uh, got a brief a brief overview of how to you know do things with an application in android studios So after creating, uh, if you are working with an app, you can run it basically uh, in the virtual machine and you can test your app here. Uh, all of the things that are happening in the uh, for code is also changing with the app. If you will create another button, it will also generate a button in the uh, mobile. So you may use the same. So let me uh i have the code for the game but i guess we just have 10 minutes so i don't think so we can create a whole game in 10 minutes but we can try we can create another button this is an start button Let me use the constraint layout for faster creation of the buttons in the content. Yeah, this is just uh, starting. So in center, you can put 
your text here I'll I'll hide the phone because we don't need it right now so uh, let me also introduce about uh, the uh, problem faced in the uh, app and game development so the most of the people face problem uh, are the errors which they face uh, but the error teaches you how to uh, generate more better code uh, in the app development or game development so you have to struggle with the co errors you have to learn from the errors i believe in the practical approach for app development you have to choose any tutorial on the uh, youtube or any other platform which will teach you how to uh, create an app in android studios so you can learn from them it it is a better approach uh, it is a faster approach rather than starting from all of the concepts from uh, all of the concepts of android development you may use the project based approach uh, i'll also uh, give you um, resources which are needed for application development and uh, which are also needed for uh, game development and youtube ch channels which can help you to create an apps and games so we have only eight minutes for the session let me uh, address any question if you have uh, in the session you may ask any question So uh, Hari is asking, what game engine would you recommend for an experienced game developer? So I recommend Unity Game Engine, which is the most popular game engine. As I said, I also use Unity Game Engine for creating my own app uh, games. It deals with Shisha programming language. It is easier to learn uh, and it is easier to create any sorts of game. So Unreal Engine is mostly based for metaverses type of uh, games, which are popular after the COVID time. So you may use uh, the Unity game engine for as a beginner. And can you uh, give us a GitHub profile for the template you mentioned uh, uh, earlier? Yeah, I'll I'll share you the GitHub profile as I mentioned. So uh, let me show you the resources. Wrap up tools and technology needed fundamental of uh, Kotlin programming language publishing. So yeah, these are the additional resources uh, which you can use uh, to learn Android and game development. So this is the Kotlin's website. This is the documentation which deals with basic syntax, uh, syntaxes and all ki kinds of tools which are needed to create uh, an game. So this is the best website because it's the official uh, official website. It deals with all of the uh, variables and uh, everything which is needed to create an app application cross uh, platform but you know uh, in fact that uh, Kotlin has created in a year uh, a cross uh, platform mobile application also which is like more reliable front end web app there are multiple things that you can build from Kotlin so you can learn Kotlin from here to start your career as in uh, Android app developer and for a game developer if you choose to be an, a game developer you can use this this resource this is the official website of unity where you can learn everything about game development for free they offer for free courses most of the courses which they create with their own uh, developers so here you can easily learn about Kotlin about about the uh, sorry unity unity so uh you you uh, as i said earlier i'll give you my uh, github profile so by tomorrow i'll upload the uh, Get a file of the game. I was talking uh, talking about we couldn't create it today because we had limited time 
so you may use the uh, my uh, github uh, profile to create your own game so thank you for the session uh, this is my github profile you you may use it uh, to access my uh, code which i'll be creating for game and all of the game which i have created i have published my code in github so you can use it for your games too it is open source and it is free to use so you can use it so i hope you learned a lot uh, during this 50 minute 50 minutes and again if you have any question you may write in the question section so yes thank you for your time uh, hope you enjoyed and learned a lot about game development and app development and you can follow me on linkedin and github i'll i'll also share the uh, slide which i have used so that you can uh, download all of the tools needed in the chat section i'll put so here is the uh, google file uh, of the docs you can use it uh, whatever i have uh, t uh, t uh, whatever i have given the information for you can use it all of the resources too so please use or uh, do use my resource thank you for your time so let me stop this so thank you and bye bye i hope i see you in my next session in code mentor if you have any question you can uh, answer or you can ask in 3 minutes we have more 3 minutes to go or else i'll end the session